Hey, Pastor Don Curry here. For the last two weeks, I've been speaking about peace, winning the invisible war. And the reality and what I was trying to communicate is that the greatest weapon we have against fear and anxiety is peace. And in those two weeks, I've tried to make some points that, you know, the peace of God will guard our lives and Paul says, let peace rule or be the umpire in your life. The first point I made the first week was that peace is more than an emotion, especially for a Christian. Because Ephesians 2.14 says that he, Jesus, is our peace. So that peace is more than just a principle or some emotion. Peace is a person. And I can remember sharing these thoughts with Mary um, before I spoke on it, she goes, what's that mean anyway? Peace is a person. And I said, good question, <laughs> because I know what the Bible says, but as I reflected, it just was so, it just so natural. Peace, if it is a person, how do you grow close to a person? It's through investment. Because if peace is a person, and it is, it's Jesus, to get close to him means that it begins to affect your world affect your soul, affect your thought life. And so you must invest in the relationship. People say, I want peace. Well, peace, as we know, it's, it's symbolized in the scriptures with the, with the Holy Spirit or the dove. And peace is like a dove. It, sometimes it just grows wings and flies away and anxiety hits us and, and uh, instability and all these things come flashing into our minds. And before we know it, our, our, we're amped up with anxiety and, and fear. And so I want to just travel down the road a little bit more regarding peace being a person, investment in a friendship. We all know what that means. If you don't spend time with somebody, how will you know them better? How will their life affect yours? And so number one, especially during this time, this time we're kind of isolated in many ways, I want to challenge and encourage you deeply to invest in your time with Christ. It, it often means setting time away. Uh, Isaiah talks about going into your closet with him. Not literally probably, but some place where you're shut away from the world. You're shut away from things and you just spend time with him. And personally, uh, in my prayer life, my time with him, I don't say a lot because I believe he has a lot more to say than I do. I mostly listen. And even when Jesus taught us the pattern prayer, in, in, Luke's, in Luke 11 and, and Matthew 6, the Our Father, we taught that. He basically, he said, you say this in one place, and another place says, pray in this manner. And that basically prayer is connection with our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. You're understanding, you're helping yourself remember who he really is. And it's about his kingdom. It's about his will being done on earth. And you begin to ask for something. And in that moment of connection, acknowledging he's our father, you're growing closer to him. So just spending time in prayer, however it works for you. Don't try to say a lot. We have petitions, we have needs, but prayer is more than anything a connection with a friend. He is our friend. Even Jesus said, you know, I don't call you servants, I call you friends because a servants do not know what their master is doing. And he has a lot of instructions for us. So I want to hear him. I want to listen. I want to spend time. Without time, there's no increase in relationship with Christ. It just isn't. And secondly, that time often is through his word. Because when I spend time in his word, I actually, nearly every morning, I put my hand on either my tablet that I'm reading or, or scripture or a book and say, Lord, let this be in me. Because it's not. I want the way Paul thought, the what Jesus taught, who Jesus is. I want it to be inside of me. And so I don't just read for information. I read for impartation. And when you spend time in his word and spend time in his presence, something happens. There's an investment in who he is. He's, he understands, you know what? They want more of me. And what happens is peace comes. And sometimes it's not measurable. And you don't even know it's there until you need it. Like the friend is there in time of need. And the Bible says a friend sticks closer than a brother. And don't be afraid of sudden fear because he'll be there with us. And so I had the experience a number of years ago. I was traveling for General Motors with a, with a 
a colleague. We're heading to another city in America. We were trying out these these parts we had manufactured, going to be machined, and to see if they were if they were sufficient for the new product line. And on the way there, uh, we went through. A, I've flown a lot in my my life, and I've never I've never been in a plane that fell as long and as far as this this one did. And as we're actually falling, free falling, the plane even tipped as we were falling, and that we had enough time to have a conversation. All the all the trays went up in the air, and the, the carts went flying forward, and the stewardesses were on the ground, and everybody, if they weren't seat belted in, they went up. I mean, it was horrible. And I actually thought, this is it, I'm done. And my friend, my Italian friend, who was really olive skinned, handsome guy, he says to me, we're having this conversation while we're falling. He says, how come you're not afraid? I said, I am. Because you don't look it. I said, aren't you afraid to die? And I go, not really. And he goes, what? And I said, well, I'm going to miss my family. And just when I said, I'm going to miss my family, bam, it's like we hit a cement uh, a cement embutment, so embutment. And we just stopped. And we just kept, we went forward. And... So I remember the stewardesses went by. I grabbed one and said, what happened? And they went to see the pilot. And it was before the doors were locked. And they opened the door. And they're talking to the pilots. And, and um, she came back by. I said, what happened? He goes, it was nothing, nothing. Well, crazy. I thought we lost an engine because we began to tip as we fell. Long and the short is this. Later that evening, this colleague of mine said to me, okay, tonight when we go out to dinner, we're having a conversation. And so he asked me a million questions about faith, about Christ, about peace, about hope. And that night he asked Christ into his heart because what he saw was something I wasn't anticipating. I wasn't planning on it. I think it was a result of some investment that when the moment came and I actually thought, I fully thought that it was over. And I could, I could actually say to him, I'm just going to miss my family. I'm sorry for that, but I'm not afraid for where I'm going. And that just captivated him. And he became a Christ follower after that. So peace, remember, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but in verse 17, just a couple verses after it, when it says in Ephesians 2 that he is our peace. Listen to what Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. He said, he came, Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to you who were near. He knew, Paul knew he was speaking to two types of people. There were those who were of Jewish descent. They were near the faith. They had heard the, the, the tenets of the faith. They were heard the law of Moses. But there were, there were also Gentiles there who worshiped Diana. And he said, when, when Christ came, he preached peace to you who were far away. And, to, and peace to those who are near. If we have one message for humanity during this time, it is peace. The greatest weapon against the invisible war. And it was Christ's message to people who are both near and far from God. God bless you. I hope this does something for your heart. And I want to encourage you during this time specifically, invest in your relationship with him who is peace. And when it, you need it, it will be there for you. And then you can also, like Christ, preach peace to those who are near and peace to those who are far away. God bless you. Um, we love you and hope to see you again soon.